this is Friday, February 5th, and um, you're listening to Irish Game Dev Podcast with me, Jeff Newman. And um, this week I've got Vicky Lee, who is known for organizing many events around Dublin, and I've gotten to know her through the event GameCraft. Uh, GameCraft is a series of game jams where people try and make a game over a short amount of time. And um, they've had GameCraft events in Ireland, UK and America. Hello, Vicky. Hello, Jeff. Hi, how are you? Grand. Um, so thanks for inviting me to have oh, a chat. No problem. Thank, thanks for chatting fun. anyway. Um, mm. Looking forward to this, just hearing all the stuff about GameCraft and such that you, you got, you've got to say. Yeah, there's a, 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 we've got stuff planned for this year, um, but we'll, we'll cover that later yeah. <laughs> with the oh. old plug. Ah, cool, yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, so, yeah, initially, uh, how did you get involved with GameCraft, or how did like the whole thing come about? Well, it's because of Andrea Magnorski. You know her? Yeah, she's been on a previous episode. So, yes, and it's because of Andrea that I, um, I talked to her a lot. We've uh, met each other over um, in different events. And both technical and female friendly events and talks and stuff and I would go hey so cool you you know co-founder of Indie Game Studio and she goes why don't you make a game if you, if you like games so much and I said I don't have time after numerous occasions of going around in circles with this she got sick of me saying that <laughs> and knowing Andrea she's, um, she's kind of saying she has an idea Vicky says you like organizing things and you all like games why not organize a game jam? And I go, okay, I've never done one before. She said, me either. So let's see what happens. So that's what happened in early 2012. We organized the first game jam in DIT in okay. Kevin Street. And, um, and that was my first, very first game jam. I did make a game there. It was very exhilarating. Uh, but I found the draw of organizing much more fun. Uh, but I still try to make a game at these game jams. Uh, but I get too distracted very, very easily mm-hmm. uh, from running around to make sure there's enough food and snacks for people, make sure people are happy. And um, I end up doing game tutorials in some of the game jams instead of actually making games. So that's how I actually got started in GameCraft. Oh, that's very cool. Um, so yeah, where bits have been some of the GameCraft events happened? Because I, I think yeah. I mentioned at the top, but I, just, I, I think I'm not even clear about exactly where they are because I just keep hearing they're everywhere. So we've had lots in Dublin. Uh, we had one in Galway. We had one in Games Flan Tipperary. We had a, a few, a couple in Cork, and we had a couple in at our set labs up in Belfast. We had one Culture Tech up in Derry, which that was partnered with Nintendo. That was a really fun one. We had a couple, a few in London, um, one in New York, one in Austria. And uh, I won't men- well, I mentioned the one in Paris. It was supposed to be a, ga- a game craft there, but we never made it. It was uh, because the, the Paris Marathon was on and it was just far too expensive for us to get over there. Oh. But they ran a game jam anyway. It was their own thing. Um, yeah, so we've pretty much been um, everywhere. I think there's a few places in the UK as well that I missed out. But uh, we've been pretty much um, wherever, I suppose, wherever people are traveling. Um, we try to see if we can run a game jam. So Andrea will be doing a lot of games-related stuff uh, with her company and at different conventions and different talks. And she gets talking to people and saying, would you like to run a game jam? And we, 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 we do game craft. And that's how we normally start with the international ones. Whereas I tend to be more focused around Ireland. And I try to organize game craft in, um, uh, and try to pull the local communities together uh, around um, uh, on, a, on a more regional level. Oh, that's cool. Um, so what's it like, actually, uh, organizing any of these events? Because you're saying you, you got hooked on it, and it's just like the buzz of having this like day run smoothly or weekend or whatever. Uh, well, um, I suppose um, there's a l- lot of things. To, I suppose, uh, in general, it's uh, more running around, which is the less fun part of it. Um, I suppose uh, the main thing is that uh, the fun part is 
getting the venue and find and being excited about the venue then and then talking to um, people who are interested in helping out and then the, you're bringing all these people together and then the the latter part will be getting all the people to come to the game jam and all the fun things happen there um the other thing is the other the more kind of um the the not so fun part is the, this is the actual literally going out to little and going to the cash and carry picking up food and beverages buying prizes at game shops and um updating event pages and promoting the events which i'm not very good at because i'm not a pr person mm. and normally we would try to look for sponsorship but we and a lot of us don't have time but uh, we're lucky enough that we still have some some bit left from before so um that we can actually keep carrying on um um Paying, paying for the various things for for future game game crafts. That's why we charge a little bit of a fee as well, to to make just in case that we need to pay for things. And if we have money left over, it goes for other game crafts as well. Oh, cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So that's that's kind of um a lot of running around uh, for me. And I would like to get more people involved, so I don't have to be the only person running around. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> I see it to be the case uh, when you know Andre approaches me with an idea and I pick up the ball and run with it. So I'm I'm still I'm still running with the ball, but I'm trying to uh, pass it on and share it with other people as well. So the other, I suppose the hardest one um, that that uh, when it comes to organizing game craft would be coming up with the theme. If I'm an organizer and working with other organizers who who don't, if they don't want to make a game, they can help uh, generate ideas. Uh, there's online ones, but uh, talking about you know what's happening at the moment, um, inspiration, geeky stuff that I'm watching. Or, uh, and that's to me, is the hardest part, is to write up, is normally write up to the zero, to, to, to zero hour, and I go, okay, we still don't have a theme, what is it? <laughs> um, but uh, sometimes you just come up with something and everyone agrees. Or I just, if no one agrees and no one says anything back, I'll just go, okay, I'm going with this theme. <laughs> um cool. But yeah, and then there's things like um, I like making things. So uh, uh, it's like um, I like try to design prize certs, or sometimes I might even create tickets. And, and then um, designing, you know, get um, Andrea got someone to help us design the design the, the, the design for the t-shirts. So we'll get those ordered as well. And so there's a lot of those kind of backward and forwarding things in the background, all the logistics stuff. But that kind of go that kind of is similar for some of the events, other events that I, I run that is, that's not game craft anyway. It's a lot of running around, yeah. but uh, I suppose that's why I said it'd be great to get other people involved to save and um, just generally organizers from burning out as well. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you mentioned there about like the themes and stuff and like you're pretty much going in still not having like a finalized theme. And what have been some of like the best ones or ones like you thought would be like fairly simple and you've seen people like come out with crazy games out of it so one of my favorite teams um was a uh, um back uh, a couple of years ago in galway and it was called glitching and how that came about was the night before we were just watching adventure time and it was an actual glitching episode it was very freaky and mm. i was saying oh i'm still hoping no one watches this episode of adventure time and this will be the theme, so we did that. And um, and Michael, my other half, what he did was he got a font that looks like a glitch, that looks like it's glitching as well, and had that on the on the event page when the team was announced. <laughs> so that was one of my favorite ones. People were saying things like, "If my game is unfinished, does it count as glitching?" And I said, "No, <laughs> <laughs> it can't. It has to be. You know, you have it's to work it into glitch. the actual game design. <laughs> it's not because it's not working and it's broken. Because you know, you have supposed to have two or three machines playing at once, and you know, one is not quite working. That's not quite glitching. Yeah. Uh, so we had quite quite fun games in that one. And then the most recent one was uh, our one of our unplugged sessions, which is a lot of fun, uh, where we basically stay away from digital games and focus on making tape anything anything that is table talk or, or role playing or street games but it was mainly people focus on making table talk games and the it was particularly different with the, the theme this time around we instead of just the name which was fairy tale we had constraints as well because um manuel um one of the folks from the the from um, who makes a lot of uh, tabletop games, he mentioned should really introduce constraints 
because making tabletop games it can be so wide open yeah. and playing the games play testing the games after, um, by the time you explain the game half an hour is gone or something then you take another half an hour to play it mm-hmm. and there's not much you know it's very hard to do a quick turnaround as opposed to digital games when you play test it it'll last depending a few seconds to a minute or something or a few minutes uh, so the constraints for that one was it had to be two players and it has to be played in th- in three rounds. So that was like something oh, different cool. as well. We carried that on to um, to 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 the last game craft, which was um, what was it? It was out in um, uh, the Christmas one in Grange Gorman, and that one was called Code Red, and the constraints was one finger. So a lot of questions about what do I mean? What do we mean by one finger? We can say it's really up to them. You're using one finger to press things. Yeah. But, you know, so there was a lot of um, kind of ingenuity coming in there, and what pe- like people can use multiple, you know, one finger. But you can use. It depends on how they approach it. It's really open, but there's a constraint to it. But it's their interpretation, and it's code red because I think it was uh, very stormy over, over <laughs> around that period. In, uh, I think around Dublin. So oh, okay. I think they, they were issuing a code red at that stage, <laughs> and they, <laughs> the people did turn up to the game craft. You were happy. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so, yeah, beyond actual game craft, you organize still a lot of events around um, Dublin and Ireland and such as well, don't you? Yeah, I started with, um, with my interest, uh, like my background is a developer, so, um, so I got into Python over 10 years ago, and saw a Python saw a Python user group started up, so I decided to jo- join it, and I ended up just running it because people wanted to hear talks and stuff and looking for venues, but no one was doing anything. So I just ended up doing it. People were just happy with me running it, yeah. and then uh, managing it anyway, getting inviting people to talk and stuff. And then the conference happened, and I was one of the main, main myself, my other half, and maybe one other person. But normally it's just me running the conference for the first few years, but I've passed the baton on to, uh, to other people now because I was, I was very, I was burning out a lot from running a, a conference for a, few, a couple hundred people and with a lot of work involved. So that, so from that, um, I got, I was, um, in 2012, I was starting to get more involved with advocating diversity in the whole tech area. So Pi Lady Dublin came about, uh, from one of the Python conferences because one of our keynotes was from um, was a co-founder of Pie Ladies in San Francisco, and uh, I said it's kind of a sign for me, and so I launched Pie Ladies Dublin. And Coding Grace was uh, co was co-founded with me and a few others, and one of the people is Andrea. She was the one who <laughs> brought up the idea. So um, and then en- ended up being a language agnostic, female friendly workshops. Uh, so for anyone who is curious about learning about any kind of tech. We have a lot of volunteers from the industry or people who are knowledgeable in the area that volu- that come along and and help mentor and help me in these workshops. So it's just um, more it's more about raising awareness and making people feel comfortable in technical events, so they can actually move move to bigger events and bigger yeah. conferences. So it's so kind of dispelling this myth that you know you have to be just a coder or. You know, it's going to be just. It is a majority, guys, but it does. You know, it, but it doesn't matter. You can still go. You know, that's the thing. You don't have to be afraid. So, uh, so I'm running. So running these workshops for me is um, and these events. You know, I'm still bringing like-minded people together, just like GameCraft. Uh, we are learning from one another. We're helping each other. We're connecting, and something something awesome might happen, like uh, business opportunities or. Um, or maybe they're taking taking someone might find a path that they would never would have thought of, and um, and just meeting, talking to people at these events, um, it's just you just um, it's uh, it, you learn so much. Well, I still do anyway, and the only reason um, why I run all these events is because I'm interested in all these areas. So I'm interested in all tech. The reason I love running game crash and running around because I love games. <laughs> So if I'm if I'm not interested in something, I wouldn't be running events for those. Yeah. So um, if you see me involved in certain things, it's because I'm I'm very much vested my interest in that area a lot. Oh, that's good. And if, yeah, and it affects me as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty awesome. 
Um, actually, yeah, from like doing all these events, I heard was you got um nominated or something on uh, Silicon Republic that it was last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. Uh, I think something called Bright Sparks Uniting STEM Communities in Ireland, and I didn't even know about it until uh, my phone was just jumping all over the place from all the Twitter notifications. That was the <laughs> point where I actually switched off notifications from Twitter. Um, because um, it was it was a surprise and to, to me because I really didn't know. No one told me about it. No one, you know, it was, it was only via Twitter. And um, it's, um, the names on the list was amazing. Like Mary Carty, she she has been advising me on a lot of things that I'm doing. So and uh, David McCoon and Mary Maloney, she's also also um, one of my advisors as well, even on her busy schedule. And then there's Sean O'Sullivan. That's a big, huge list, you know, to <laughs> to be on, and I'm totally so not worthy. And I just uh, was so shocked and uh, and uh, and honored, I suppose, at the same time. Uh, but it, yeah, I don't know how I don't know um, how I got on the list, but I'm on, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Congratulations on getting that list, anyway. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I think it, um, we did, we need more people. I think um, uh, to to promote um, uh, STEM uh, in the more kind of because I mean we have a lot of we have coded dojos we still don't have enough adult coding workshops we have you know that kind of thing or, or events that are friendly for adults yeah and um, and I think that's for me I'm I'm doing a lot of female friendly stuff but I because I'm I'm still the one person and a lot of these things and I don't, I'm I'm already spread quite thin. Yeah. So in order to for me to um to concentrate on doing something properly, I'm concentrating on more of the the gender diversity side of things. But until um yeah, I suppose when I when when I get more people to help, I can spread out to other areas of diversity as well. So like more like the, about the cultural, the, you know, the 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 cultural or uh, not um not just based on gender identity or, you know, people who are disabled or people from, um, you know, uh, uh, from, from uh, kind of uh, more poor backgrounds, like, you know, things like that. You know, I, I would like to help um, all the, the various different areas, but I need to concentrate on one area first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, actually, you were talking about, like, how you'd, you'd like some help and stuff like people. How would people... Um get involved and stuff i suppose for gamecraft uh, it we be uh, i think we have a few folks on the community and we would love to have more people to get involved so if you are interested just email just drop us an email at info at gamecraft.it we're looking for people who either want to run gamecraft want to be involved in helping the organizers run gamecraft want to help with the prom- promotion or look for sponsors or, you know, or something that you really want to improve on, um, here's one way, get involved and um, maybe we can make we can um, make changes, you know, and improve on the way we're doing things. So it's, um, we're, we're, kind of, we're open for ideas and we do have a committee of people um, on board at the moment. Oh, cool. Um. Okay, is there anything else you want to say before? Because I think I've asked all my questions now already. You're a very quick talker, so. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. plugging part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to go straight um, into the plugging. We or? have a yeah. We have a uh, GameCraft has an upcoming game jam. So for all those who just um, you know finished the global game game jams, if you still want to um, have have a bit of energy left and you still want to do, make more games, we have um, a I Heart You GameCraft. At, uh, hosted by DIT Grange Gorman on Saturday, February thirteenth. So it's um, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's, it's uh, last year went so well. We decided to run another Valentine's game jam, and oh, it's a cool. uh, ticketed for ten euro. So uh, again, the money goes into paying for expenses for the game for game for the game jam, and um, but you, you can find all the details and all, and the tickets via GameCraft.it. Oh, cool. And how will people be able to follow you or other events and such um, that you organize? Um, uh, you can follow us on Twitter uh, at, um, I think it's, yeah, it's Global Gamecraft. We still haven't changed to Gamecraft. We've changed our name so many times. We just uh, kept, um, we have so many followers. 
So on Twitter is Global Gamecraft. Um, if you search for us on Facebook, we have a face, uh, Facebook page as well. But uh, the, game, uh, the Twitter, uh, we, we tweet a lot, so um, you'll find all the information. And our, our website as well, we, we update whenever events get updated. Um, that page will get updated as well. Oh, cool. And uh, what would be the links for Pie Ladies? And- so our next Pie Ladies is on Tuesday, February 16th. It's going to be held in AOL. It's going to be about testing. So we have a speaker from AOL talking about AOL talking about a test framework with, with Python, and uh, we're going to do a mini mini kind of workshop on um, how to do unit testing with Python, so people can bring their laptops along. And uh, for our next coding brace workshop, we have um, it's, it's on actually this Saturday for anyone who's interested in data visualization. We'll be showing we have a few a few mentors who will be showing you tools. And and um, an overview about uh, data visualization as well, and uh, yeah, those are the the two two um, um, female friendly events that I'm involved in, um, and um, I think um, think that's that's it for now. Um, like for for um, because that I have a newsletter for Coding Grace that lists all the different kind of events. Yeah. And I just, I think it got just posted out um, uh, just uh, on the first. So um, I can send on the link to you, Jeff, and maybe you can put it up there if people are interested. I, I list all the events that are happening around Dublin, Ireland. So it's not just female events, female friendly events. Mm-hmm. I also have, you know, um, um, I, I, I try to get everything, including games, as much as I can. Yeah. So there's the I think the Limerick the um, Limerick Game Design Meetup as well as in there, um, as well as you know, the various different game jams. But I think it's just our one. So, um, but if anyone else have any games related events they want me to include, send that to me as well. I'll send I'll give the details to you, Jeff. Yeah, you can I'll, I'll put it in the, the, in the put description, description if you want. Yeah. So people can find that easy. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much for chatting this evening. Oh, um, thank you for inviting me for a chat. <laughs> no problem. Very informative, and I hope people now like go along to next game craft, which is on Saturday, thirteenth of February, and yes. get your Valentine's love on and make yeah. some games. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much.